Welcome to ATB TV. I'm Darren Dance here with Peter Morganti in the Twilight Edition of ATB on Thursday night. Pete, you've been out and about around the farm, I reckon, for the last four hours. Yeah, we started about half one. What happened? Um, well, every horse, basically. We had the cameras on and the videos on. And me and myself, Tom, we dodged some flying hooves and <laughs> got some reports done. Some, obviously they're going to get this out, but a lot of the reports are out. It was good, was able to send them out while Tom was unclipping the next rug. Yeah, well, so got to take the catch them, you've got to get the rugs off, and yep. uh, got to keep their mates away. But they played fair game, they were all good. They were all good. Little Dandy Anna decided to go for a walk around the paddock when <laughs> she was the last one, and Tom said that'd be right, but um, no, nah, all good, all in good condition. So all the spellers are done. Basically all the spellers are done, and um, uh, I've got photos of them all, which will go out tomorrow as okay. well and they had the sun on them and they all look terrific well it was a nice day clear blue sky and the sun it wasn't warm but uh you know they all do look good under their yeah, rugs don't they they do and um yeah sunshine was beautiful after the start to this week it was fresh this morning all right well just the four runners for the week pete yeah place percy place part of we are should have had four all up <laughs> the place start with sea princess her a debut at packenham i think that was was that Monday? Monday? Yeah. Uh, buried back in the field, but uh, she hit the line nicely. Yeah, she ran third in that two-year-old race, uh, trained by Anthony Freeman. Uh, Sebring filly we bought out of Easter. Um, slow away, yeah. right back in on the fence last on the bend and uh, sort of found a way out through there and uh, hit the line okay for third. Yeah. Um, they thought if she jumps, uh, she would have been a winning chance, but... Yeah, she just got a bit stirred up before the start. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not really sure what happened there, but um, yeah, she was slow away, but yeah, hit the line well. And you'll see her in a couple of weeks on a Wednesday at Sandown in a two year old Phillies race. So they obviously think she's got some ability. Yeah, I think the big truck would suit her. Hmm. No, she looked good. Yep. Um, roll on to Tuesday, Penthouse Playboy. Now, this has been a, a, a horse work in progress, obviously, a lot of issues, as the Arnas know. And, so it was a surprising result, but it was a bloody good result. He was good, wasn't he? He's finishing third. Young Laura Lafferty on. Yep. No. Heavy 15 track. <laughs> Penthouse Playboy, eh? Um, he's a horse that um, 2018 in December ran in the Jericho. As favourite. Favourite for DK Weir. Mm -hmm. um, didn't go any good that day as favourite. Um, he was jumping the crossings and <laughs> didn't really look at home at all. But, yeah, just things have gone really pear shape since then with him and um, he's been in and out a number of times he had a couple of really bad foot abscesses we sort of had him in and ready to go and then he'd get another foot abscess and it's just taken a long long time and Karen got him in I think he got one running into a colac and he went pretty well went good, and yeah. uh, then they gave him a hurdle trial and then he hurt himself so yeah he uh, we were back to the drawing board with him and um, we had to give him plenty of time so He's had no luck right through the last 18 months or two years nearly, probably 18 months. And um, yeah, we sent him down to young Patrick Ryan, um, which was Karen's recommendation. Mm -hmm. He's a fellow down there at Warrnambool that, um, yeah, he's a bit of a rehab master and focuses on these older sort of horses with lots of issues and takes his time and produced him first up at Warrnambool in a what he said would uh, be more like a trial than a run for him. <laughs> to the horse's credit, he, he showed his true ability by uh, hitting the line really strong for third. And I thought his last six strides were super, like he was really gobbling him up. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing him get out to 2,000, Pete. And I must say, uh, Laura Lafferty, I thought she rode him uh, an absolute peach. The instructions were to go forward and try and get into 1-1. Well, she couldn't have done it any better. And uh, yeah, the other key component is this horse does most of his work in the heavy sand, so mm. he's a sound, happy horse at the moment and, and race well. So. And he's pulled up good. Yeah, yeah, but he'll, we have no reason to let Pat's we can get him out to 2000 and be on pretty quickly now. Yep, so fingers crossed, uh, we're over the, all the worst of it, and uh, fingers crossed, we, he's a happy, sound horse, we can keep him that way. If we can get three or four or five runs into him in yeah. a row, he, he won't be far off winning. No, no, exactly. And we wouldn't have persevered if we didn't think he was a city class no. star. And that's what we've always thought. Remember back to that second over 3,000 of the valley. So you know he's a horse that can Got run a trip. Yep. Uh, Wednesday, Midweek City, Sandown.
For an hour of sorts, Darren. Yeah. Should have got the first four, Pete. Yeah. yeah. 25,000. Matty Williams trains the winner. We, we Backed go, off the map. Yeah, we go 2-3, and Matty has the other, I think it was a prize horse, he trains mm -hmm. from his barn and water, so what did Pope? 24,000. Could have got it in one hit. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Just field, second, third, fourth. Uh, we, it's, I was surprised, and you we made the comments about how big a price our two were, and uh, Captain well, Harry ended up starting $15. Yep. He's finished second after leading, which was something new. And Connery was like a $12 chance into nine, and I mean, he was just coming off a Saturday place. I find it hard to understand, really. Like, I think we had that discussion on the morning of the race why is one horse $14 and why is one horse $8.50? Yeah. Um, I would have thought that Captain Harry would have been six or seven dollar chance on very unlucky at Cranbourne and should have won that should have start. Been the last start winner. Yeah. And if he was the last start winner, he starts six bucks. Yeah. But he gets beat. So I don't know whether they don't look at the form or well, they don't look at the replays. Or, I, I don't know. I how don't understand. It. Corporate bookmakers go, but I listened to RSN and Dean Lester tipped him to run second and third. Yeah, but, but he does his homework. He, I was going to say he's more of a guide, yeah. and I don't know if he tipped the winner, but, I, but the he, people betting on him. I don't know what they do. I don't get it. But five dollars to place Captain Harry. Like <laughs> we would have thought. I honestly thought he'd start about that price. But when the markets went out, it was like. Oh. We've done Lost something the wrong lead. Here. We've done something wrong here. Yeah, and you start to doubt yourself. Yeah. I, look, honestly, I thought he was. They were both good place chances. Yep. Um, I know you might have had the Quinella Pete, but I haven't <laughs> had a bet during lockdown. No, I, no, I was just a Quinella, just hoping, not yeah. betting. But uh, Mitch said that's the most genuine he's seen that horse go for, in a long time in terms of. Well, it's interesting this prep, isn't it? Like he's jumping and bouncing and putting himself yeah. up the front, whereas last prep he was out the back and well, been yeah. hunted along. You are. Knew he was going to miss it by two or three, yeah. Mm. So he's a happy, sound horse, and yep. Mitch has done a great job with him. And uh, look, he done all the work, didn't he? The winner had weight off him and had the suck run behind him. And he done all that with 60 and a half kilos. Half, what killed him was halfway through the race when that horse went yeah. on his outside and put the pressure on. Yeah. And I thought, oh, he's going to drop out here. Mallon but he was kicked, just, kicked. just looking for that extra 200, just quiet. And just kicked, I thought. And uh, nearly, nearly won it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Connery, well, he was back and. He was charging, yeah, and uh, gee, I love the way he sticks his head out. Like there was a wall of them there, and well, he's you got just a see this, fifth, wasn't he? You just see this black neck yeah. stuck out like a giraffe, and he just wanted to beat those horses yeah. around him. And yeah, like he's loving racing, so and he's put two good runs together now. So that, and like what's that? His third running, yeah. So he's going to be cherry ripe now, and it'll be a nice race for him, and uh, it'll be a nice race for Captain. And the Harry. weather's weather's going to play into the hands of just, both. Just Wet tracks, guys, that's all we want with those two. That's why they're in this time of year. Yeah, and I think both could be heading Bendigo way. Absolutely not the same race. No, not again. Not when you've got two winning chances. Mm. But I think Captain Harry's got a few choices. But, uh, but we need a winner, and they're two that are pressing. They're ready to go. Pete. Yep. Uh, so that's it. Three-thirds of a second. Yep. Place percentages are going up nicely. Little checks. Little checks. <laughs> Something. Something. Upcoming runners. Tomorrow, Donald, tomorrow's Friday, mm -hmm. uh, Passaggio out to 2,000 metres. I reckon we go back three starts ago, I'm not too sure we would have been talking about Passaggio in a winning light, but well, he he's gets a chance up. tomorrow. Yeah, he's $5 in the early markets, uh, third favourite there. There is a short price one of Urals in the race, but uh, Noel Callow said, get him to 2,000 metres, win your maiden and wave him goodbye. I hope. Uh, what did he also say that oh, I'd be riding him up outside the leader? Mm. Giving him no excuses. Jamie Knott's on, so got well, a good strong rider. Yeah. And he needs a good strong rider. Go so 9 2000. I think Robbie Griffiths and the team have thought about that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they've put the right bloke on. So he does get his chance, but he's going to be, well, you'd expect him to be off the bridle the halfway mark. Yeah, just hope he can keep going. So I'll be interested to see how he goes. Don Eduardo on his side, do Go about three laps. Yeah, he needs six thousand. So <laughs> he'll be um, look. He'll be some sort of each way chance there. Yeah. And if, if he does improve a bit, yeah, he can win. Fall off the chair if he's our winner for the month. <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's limited. Uh, Saturday we go back to headquarters where we got serious suspect fourteen hundred. I think it's an open handicap. Bradwell Willis drawn ten. Um, obviously we sort of probably a bit fresh last time. He's had that run, it's three weeks in between runs, but he's had a trial. Uh, 
He's his own worst enemy over this trip, and as long as he can brace, they've got the earmuffs on, I think he's going to race in them. Mm. Trial to him, going to race in them. He's just got to settle. Otherwise, it's, you know, he just becomes a target if he doesn't settle. Well, he was a sitting duck last time. Yeah. Um, month between runs, going to the lead and taking off with the 400, done well to run fifth. Yeah, and only been a and a half, done yeah, a super job. Like, just crazy stuff. So, yeah. um, surely. Surely this time, from 10, there's no need to go on lead um, up there. Um, there's, there's probably no need to even to sit outside the leader. Um, he can probably be 1-1 one, one if he wants to be. Well, if he's going... I think they just got to be patient, Pete. Yeah. Um, they just got to be patient. No use kicking at the 400 and going forward and two lengths in front because you're going to get run down. Yeah, look, I've never, never ridden a horse, never been a jockey, and probably never cut out to be one. You just, I think, he, as soon as you dig this horse out, he, he just thinks, well, my job is to ride to the front. Well, so. if you dig him, like we always said, you ride him neutral. Yeah. And just let him be where he wants to be without really firing him up because yeah. he doesn't come back to you. No. We know that. I'm very, going to be very, very interested to watch this this weekend because I'm not convinced myself that he's a 1,400 metre horse and I've told Sava San that. Uh, he's very clear on what I think. Um, I'll be disappointed if they uh, go for home at the 400 because it'll just be a yeah. sit and shot. Same horses will be at home. So, you know, and the horses that he was beaten over 1,200 have been winning every week at Flemington, Pete. Mm. So, um, whatever happens Saturday, I think the horse will probably go for a spell yeah. and uh, he'll be back for the summer. But um, anyway, happy to be proven wrong that these blokes can get him back into winning form. Um, I'd love to be proven wrong. So he's in good order. He's in, he's in a nice race. I don't know what the price is. Seven fifty. Seven fifty is yeah. he? So what is he about third or fourth favourite? Yeah, there's a uh, yeah, there's a five dollar chance. So, so I kind of close up in it again with yeah. a little bit more weight. So you know he's a rated ninety something, and yeah. this is his benchmark. This is where he's at. Well, he's on the minimum weight, so if he can't be winning on the minimum, yeah. you so know, it's, it's pretty hard at this level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can have ten goes and win one. So. We're well, only a length off listed type horse. Yeah, yeah, you know. and that's right. So you know, he's you know the weather's going to be okay. Um, it's going to be cold, I think, Saturday, but I don't think there's a heap of rain. No, but um, you know, he'll get his chance. I just hope they ride him better. And I hope that um, they haven't been too soft on him with the three weeks between runs. Yeah. He gets every chance to uh, return to the winner's circle. Um, Swan Hill Sunday, nothing there. Mornington, the fields aren't out, actually, for Monday, Tuesday. No. So we've got nominations for Whitemore, Rotorah, Lord Lennox, across all those meetings, I suppose, just in short. Whitemore, you know, we're obviously looking for a dry track or synthetic. So uh, he's, he could run either at Mornington or Pakenham. Pakenham. Yep. More likely probably go to um, Pakenham, I think. Because I, uh, I think, we, didn't we say we wanted to get him on the same thing? Yeah, and, and 14, there is a 1,400 metre race in his so, class. Yeah, yep. so he's probably going to uh, Pakenham. Lord Lennox is a 1,700. I think Robbie wanted to come back from the 2,000 back in trip. Right. That's at sale. So on Wednesday, Wednesday so. and I think uh, Rotary might be going there as well. I'd love to see him on that Track. Yeah, he needs a big Because <coughs> there was a nomination for Coral. I didn't even know that was in Australia, is it? <laughs> it's in New South Wales somewhere, but he's a big track horse. And, um, yeah, well, he can run on it, so. so. But did you read the last bit of Shade's report? Of course not. No. <coughs> what do you say? It's the old line. We've never had the horse go better. <laughs> the old chestnut. Well, he'd want to go better. <laughs> Getting beaten, Cassidy. Oh, uh, look, he's, he's, just a, he's just a big track horse. He's a Flemington Bendigo sale type, sand yep. type horse. Well, he's got to get a sale. But we just need a try, so. Well, we're, well, I'd expect to see Whitemore at Pakenham, Lord Lennox and uh, Rotorua down at Sale. Yeah. That's what I'd expect to happen. Agree. Enough, other than that, I don't think we've got any runners. No. So, so we, we'll go, probably, we go tomorrow, Donald and Serious Suspect. Probably just have the five or six for the week. I think we mentioned there's only about a dozen, actually. I did see Serious Deal nine out somewhere. Yeah, Matt's toying between... There wasn't a lot of options after Warnable. There was a race at sale, mm. which I think was a mile, which was nearly coming back a bit too far for him. Yep. Or there was a sand end race, but it was up to a benchmark 70 over 18. Wouldn't and get a run. Probably, no, he said that he'd be 100th in order. Mm. It would be a nice option. I'd like be to nice see that him. Yeah, nice yeah. that look at him against that class just to see where he fits. But anyway, he'll, anyway um, he'll sort it out. Of course, he was scratched during the week in the race. Penthouse Playboy ran 30. Yep. 
But like we said, there's only a dozen or so out of the 30 odd in trainer that are racing. So, you know, we, we go through half a dozen one week and the other half the next week. So. Yeah, and there's a few there that have trialled over the last few days that won't be far away. Yeah. Um, spoke to Paul Prushka, asking Hasanaki, one more trial next Tuesday and then the races. Yep, murals. Trial today, and I haven't seen the vision, but the report from Jockey and Trainer was what they wanted to see and nice trial little, again. Nice little two year old down at Daniel Bowman's, can't be far off. Capriccio, I think, mentioned running later this month. Right. Um, so there's some. Well, three well, it's got three newbies too. Yeah. Oh, when Hustnack, who's had a run, but um, yeah. she went shins. So they'll be first up. Yeah. So there's three or four coming through. Yep, three to breakers next week, the last lot of our yearlings. And this 10,000 can't be far away. And she's the other one that's the obvious. Hopeful she might. Chance. She might be in late next week as well. There's a lot of ours have got actually a placing next to their name at the moment. They're all around the mark and they're all ready to win. <coughs> so uh, yeah. Now what happened last week, Pete? Uh, From the tipping, the tipping comp. Um, I think there was a bit of bit of change there. I think it was Tom Altworth now who tipped 16 points. That's pretty good effort, isn't it? Yeah, good effort. That's like I think his best bet comes in. So best bet two other winners. Uh, and the group. Well, he, the, he really should have got the quarter then, shouldn't he? Yeah, I don't know which leg he missed out on, but yeah, in that theory, he's, he's got three legs. Mm. Mm. Um, the leaders all sort of fell over themselves a bit. John Rose. So who's winning? Tom Halsworth has gone Tom's from about fifth to leader by about six. Is he? With that 16 points. So the leaders only sort of got four, five and six, which right. is John Rose and Maureen Plews and Sideshow Bob. Yep. I think it was Sideshow. So um, do you know what the scores are? Who um... About he's six in front, seventy. Oh, he'd be seventy odd. And yep. About sixty-five back to second and third. I forgot off memory. Yep. I know there's a few there complaining that they haven't hit thirty yet. <coughs> a few, well below thirty. <laughs> some, oh, I think I told you, someone told me to scrub their name off the list. It was embarrassing. <laughs> Liz and myself tipped exactly the same last week. I saw that. Don't know. That didn't work, did it? We got a winner. One winner and a second, I think. Yeah. We won two seconds. Huh? Winner, two <coughs> That's seconds. right, we got, yeah, we tipped, okay. So what points do you get for that? Um, might have ended up with eight or ten. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, not We're too right. bad. We, we can't show them up, we're just going to hang around. With hang a couple around. Of, I think I sent mine through to Liz, and Liz goes, this is crazy, I think we've tipped the same and the same best bet. So. I reckon you guys are, uh, so what do you think? We're not colluding because we're not winning. <laughs> in, your, in horse terms, who do you think <coughs> you are? You think you're yogi? You're just going to hang out at the back and make a big run late? Yeah, I don't know if there'd be any finishing burst though. <laughs> it's funny, I was a bit annoying myself because I did tip. I had Hepty got marked originally and changed my mind. Don't you hate that? Because it wins by about four. One easy, didn't it? Yeah. Um, oh well. Never change your mind. So don't forget about the tipping comp this weekend. Yep. I don't know when... Uh, I was trying to come up with some theories how we can narrow the group, you know, maybe the worst bottom 10 scores just get turfed aside. No, we don't want to play. Yeah, but they can keep playing, but they just can't win. Well, why can't they? Oh. Oh. What, what about if they get 16 points three weeks in a row? This lockdown could go to 2023. Oh, I, think <laughs> I, think I don't think we're far away. <coughs> yeah. I don't think New South Wales have yeah, got people so going back to the races Saturday, owners. Peter Volandi doesn't bloody pull a punch up there, does he? No. And, He's, um, um, oh, and um, Darwin, I think Darwin have got patrons going back to the races. WA? They're WA. back, yep. So I think, when do they say in Victoria? What are they saying? Well, I reckon we're going to get through June. And then we'll have July? a lot of owners in July. Limited notice in yep. July. There you go. You've heard it first on ATV TV. Inside knowledge. Except for Shelley Hancock's mob with 800 owners. <laughs> no. uh, four metres apart. Yeah. No, I think I, I'm thinking that July will have some sort of trickle back, which would be good. Yep. So we're a month away, aren't we? So the jockey's only got another four weeks of I think, the lie. I honestly think a lot of things will change after those June, July school holidays. Yep. Because I think they're going to wait for the impact of the, what the change they've made which they're going to find out about in the next couple of weeks yeah. and then I think with school holidays they probably don't want everyone taken off all over the country and maybe after school holidays when the kids go back and yeah. everyone's at work they might just open it up a little bit if things That's don't deteriorate. Good point, that probably pushes towards the end of June doesn't it? I reckon, I yeah. reckon sometime in July things will change. My bloke goes back I got week, to, I've got a yearling, for two got, weeks. we've got a yearling in the uh, Magic Man sales in late July. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to Magic Mins the other day, and they said, we'll see you there. Oh, there you go. And I said, well, I don't know if I can go. They said, you'll be right. I don't know. 
They know more than I know. Some people just are in the know, Dan. That's it. And others are just guessing. Right, so anything else, Pete? Uh, Birthday we had during the week? Yeah, who was that? Peter Gallagher. Ah, Pete. The king. He'd be looking for a pub to open too, Pete. Well, he keeps ringing me and saying, when are you coming to Bendigo? I said, no, not worth it yet. No pubs open, Pete. He was, was a very thirsty boy for his birthday, I hear. Oh, right. So when did it fall? During the week? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday drink? Oh, I think they had a heavy session <laughs> there. Him and his work colleagues? I think so. I don't think there was many locks getting changed on Wednesday. <laughs> Hey? No, good on him. Pete, 45, Pete. Uh, well, look yeah. well for 45. I thought he turned 60, didn't you say? <laughs> uh, don't say that too much, because as the time flicks by, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, have you got anything else? No, nothing else. Like I said, did a heap of reports. They'll come out and, um, yeah, look forward to only a couple of runners. Yep. Friday and Saturday. We will. Well, we're going to leave it there this week. Um, so until next week. I'm Darren Dance with Peter Morganti. Happy tipping. And I don't think it'll be that long before you get back to the races. The pressure's going to come on to Victoria now that New South Wales are back. And um, they won't be able to hold us, hold us back for much longer. It's a good thing about Pete for landing something. He's <laughs> him up. Pressure board. Pressure. Well, okay. until next week, Darren Dance, Peter Morganti, signing off with Liz Dance in the background, hovering, doing the cues. Cheerio. <laughs> Applause. Very good. <laughs>